All right, so I was asked to make a, a better video of my controller. I figure I'll show you guys a bit more. So here's my uh, diesel power products. They're Spectre BGT. It's a 6270 turbine. A little bit better, bigger in stock. As you can see, this is the factory actuator. Absolutely no modification to it. And I used the uh, correct Delphi uh, connectors. And the way to set this up is just plug it straight into the factory actuator. You're going to have two leads here, one for positive and negative. All you got to do is ground it out. And on the other side, actually I relayed it. So when my uh, fuel solenoid kicks on, over here, whenever I get power to my fuel solenoid, it actually turns on my turbo. So it's pretty simple, you literally just plug it in and go. This is the, the Honeywell sensor. Oh, you guys, you got your 5 volt reference. You got your ground and then your 5 volt return that goes to the input. As long as the sensor is anywhere on a charge pipe, it shouldn't really matter where it's at. Alright, like I was talking before in my other video, is you have a selector switch and a knob. Basically all this does is it splits the 5 volt reference. So the reference actually comes up, goes to the center pin here, and then it splits out to the left and the right. The left one goes back to the controller, but it bends back up to connect to the, the pot. And it basically lets you vary from 0 volts straight to 5 volts. So it's acting just like the sensor, except it gives you control over it. So the other lead goes straight to the 5 volt reference on the, uh, the Honeywell sensor. So hopefully that kind of makes sense. So that's all you're really doing is you're just varying the voltage like the sensor would with PSI except you're doing it to the knob. And there's a total of uh, six pre-programmed pre positions. Three centimeters is the break. Then it goes to nine, 12, 18, and then it jumps to 25 centimeters. Where if you have it on a sensor, it automatically sees a 0.5 volt reference that the sensor is designed for. So that's where it stops at uh, 9 centimeters. As long as you're on the sensor, it'll never close more than 9 centimeters. So as you build boost, let's say uh, 21 PSI, it opens up to 12 centimeters and so on, 12, 15, 18. And then same thing here. So when you're actually controlling it with the pot, when you go down to 0 volts, it basically closes it all the way up to 3 centimeters. So you have your exhaust brake. You turn it until the voltage jumps up to, uh, I can't remember what it is, but whatever equates to up to 21 PSI, so it's around 2.1 volts, I think. And as long as you stay within 0.2 to 2.1 volts, you're gonna stay within uh, the nine centimeters. And once you increase past that, it's gonna to jump to the, uh, the 12 and to the 15 and so on. So that, that's all it does, it just varies the resistance. You can, if you wanna get creative, you can take the, uh, the five volt reference line, which is on pin 12, and you can actually split it to a uh, momentary, normally closed uh, push button switch, and then you can actually have like a, a push button contact um, e brake, and that's something I've been thinking about trying to put on my truck. So it'll actually, be kind of cool. You can basically have a button on your uh, your shifter or wherever you want to put it, and instead of moving it over here and then turn it to the left, you can leave the switch for manual control of the vanes. And then just go on your shifter and just press like a, a button and then you'll have your, uh, your exhaust brake whenever you want it and you don't have to actually keep reaching forward, you just be able to press it. So it makes it a little bit easier.